Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, Jeremiah chapter 10, beginning in verse 1 today. Get your Bible, open it up to Jeremiah 10. You can study God's Word with me anytime that you want to, just like we're going to do today using my audio Bible messages at the Scripture Verse by Verse website, and that's found at the Bible versebyverse.com. Go there, choose, click, and listen. From four complete, going on five, this is actually the fifth series in the last 38 years the New Testament has done, going through every single verse of the Bible. Again, that's at the Bible, versebyverse.com. Check it out today. Bring your Bible and a hunger for God's Word, because that's all you ever need, at the Bible, versebyverse.com. Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Jeremiah 10. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaks unto you, O house of Israel. And the word has not been very good. Or very, let me put it this way, it has not been very much fun for the Israelites to hear. Although they, although they were so desensitized to truth that it probably didn't even bother them. They didn't believe it. They didn't believe the messages of judgment, punishment, because they were used to listening to preachers who told them what they wanted to hear, and they believed it. They hated the truth, so they believed a lie, like many people today. Two, thus says the Lord, learn not the way of the nations, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the nations are dismayed at, dismayed at them. In other words, God says, don't be superstitious. Don't give heed to false teachers. Don't serve false gods. Don't pay any attention to any of their threats. And of course, they're not going to listen to a single thing that God has to say through Jeremiah. But he's going to say it anyway, because the word of God needs to be heard. Three. For the customs of the people are vain. Now, now listen to what listen to what people were doing in those days. In place of the one true God. One cuts a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of a workman, with an axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it moves not. They are upright as the palm tree, but they speak not. They, they must be born. In other words, they have to be carried because they can't go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. For the cust- No wonder God said, for the customs of the people are vain. In other words, their customs are completely useless. So why are you... My people, Israel, why are you so enamored and why do you go after them? These customs of the people that are in vain include false religions. And so God is saying, get rid of your idols. They can't help you if you worship them. And they can't even harm you if you throw them away. Throw them in a fireplace. Burn them. Get some use out of them. They can't hurt you. Throw them away. They're useless. They're nothing. Six. Since as there is none like unto you, O Lord, you are great, and your name is great in might. In other words, God is the only one that counts, and he's the only one who is real. God is the only one that we should fear. Seven, who would not fear you, O king of nations? For to you it is due. Since among all the wise men of the nations and in all their kingdoms there is none like unto you. God is the ruler. So if you want to fear a God, then fear the one God, the true God. Because with the rest, you're simply wasting your life by worshiping them, by counting on them, by fearing them. 
8, but they are altogether senseless and foolish. The wooden idol is a doctrine of vanities. In other words, the gods are just stupid chunks of wood. You know, there's a lot of idolatry going on that's not even recognized as idolatry today. And it comes under the name of Jesus often. The Jesus, for example, of the Jehovah Witnesses is idolatry. The Jesus of Mormonism is idolatry. In fact, Mormonism is closer to Hinduism than it is to Christianity. Mormonism tries to come across as just another form of Christianity. They're not. They're not Christianity. Because, number one, they have millions of gods. Just like Hinduism. Millions of gods. Anyone can say that they worship Jesus, you see, including them, or the Jehovah Witnesses, or in many cases, modern evangelicalism, who has, who has turned Jesus into a cool dude. But those Jesuses are nothing like the Jesus found in the Holy Bible, King James Version, New King James Version, slide updates, used using the uh, received text. That's the true Bible. They simply use the name Jesus, these people, but then they invent their own Jesus. Boy, what a, what a trick of the devil. To use the name of Jesus and then create a Jesus that's not the Jesus of the Bible. Draws a lot of people in, a lot of people who love their sin, a lot of people who do not love truth. People invent their own Jesus and then they, of course, pick and choose what they want him to be like. Just a fun thing to do until you, until you die and go to hell. There's no fun anymore. But he continues to describe these idiotic, useless, non-living, non-existing gods. Silver beaten into plates is brought from Tarshish and gold from Uphaz, the work of the craftsmen and of the hands of the goldsmith, blue and purple in their clothing. They are all the work of skillful men. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting king. At his wrath the earth shall tremble, and the nation shall not be able to endure his indignation. God says, tell those who worship these false gods that the real God is eternal. The real God is not man-made, like those other so-called gods. If you have to make a god, <laughs> if you have to make a god, don't you think that it's foolish to worship that God? Since it's, since it's a product of your creation? You made them. That means you are better than they are. That means you have more power than they do. So why bother chipping a God out of a chunk of wood? You, you might as well just worship yourself. Because you're better off worshiping yourself because at least you're smarter than the dead God that you made out of a chunk of wood. Other gods are nothing gods. The false Jesus, Jesuses of Mormonism, Jehovah Witnesses, and much of modern evangelical is, is not, it's just nothing gods. They don't exist. There is no God but the one God revealed in Scripture. The real God is the Creator and the Judge, and you've got to be insane not to fear and not to serve the one true God. Only you won't be able to plead insanity on the day of judgment. God's not buying it. 11. Thus shall you say unto them, The gods that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. God says, Tell those who worship false gods, that their gods are going to perish from this universe that I have created. God says that he made the universe and he made everything in it. And whatever God that you worship, if he's not the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, then that God, so-called, is going to perish. 12. He has made the earth by his power. He has established the world by his wisdom. 
and has stretched out the heavens at his discretion. God is the one who created everything. And he didn't use evolution because evolution is a line that contradicts scripture. And there's so many smug modern evangelicals. I've heard them talk and they just scoff at people who don't believe, Christians, who don't believe in evolution because they are Christians. They're evangelicals and they believe in evolution. And you idiots who take the book of Genesis literally, oh, how silly. Don't you know it doesn't line up with what Darwin says? And what the modern intelligentsia of the world says? Oh, we're so much smarter than you, and yet we're still Christians. Don't count on it. God made everything by his power, just exactly as it is stated in the book of Genesis, and he established the world the way that he wanted to. God put it all together like a fine-tuned automobile. There are, there are problems in the universe. There's, that's true. But it's only because of sin. And sin has been in the world since Adam and Eve fell. God warned. But God is still stretching out the heavens. As the Bible says. Because it's still expanding. 13. When he utters his voice. There is a multitude of waters in the heavens. And he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightnings with rain and brings forth the wind out of his storehouses. God brings the clouds when he wants, it, wants them to be close. God controls the weather. None of us can speak the weather into existence, but God can. 14. Every man is senseless in his knowledge. Every goldsmith is put to shame by the graven image, for its molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. They are vanity. And the work of errors in the time of their judgment, they shall perish. On judgment day, it's all going to be gone. All those false idols and those who worship them are going to perish. So again, it's not just a waste of time to worship these things. It's not just a waste of time to worship a false Jesus or anybody or anything else or any other religion. It's not just a waste of time. It is a it is an eternal death sentence for those who do it. 16. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things. He made all things, and Israel is the tribe of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. In other words, God is not, not like those false idols, and God is not like anyone else. God designed everything and he formed everything. Those who worship false, false gods are clearly going to be ashamed of themselves on judgment day when they are sent to hell and their precious but lifeless and useless gods can't save them. Don't count on a chunk of wood. Don't count on a piece of cement. Don't count, no matter how Fancy it's decorated. Don't count on a Jesus that doesn't line up with the Bible, Jesus. Don't count on anything or any of those things to save you when you are plunged into hell. You can cry out to them all for eternity, the entire eternity, and you're not going to get a response because they're not real. And if your God can't save you from hell, your God is useless. Study all of God's word with me at the Scripture Verse by Verse website. And that's found at thebibleversebyverse.com. Choose, click, and listen from four complete series, going on five, going through the whole Bible, verse by verse. If you'd like to be a part of Scripture verse by verse, pray for me. Do it right now while you're thinking about it. Pray for God's Word. Pray for me. Put a note on your refrigerator door. Pray for Mike. Pray for scripture verse by verse. Pray for the word of God so that you'll be reminded to do it throughout the day. That's how you become a very important part of this ministry. And also, when you take a break from studying with me at thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the donate button, prayerfully give as the Lord may lead because that also makes you a part of this ministry. See you next time.